You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as our guest Ted Dabrowski, who's VP at the Illinois Policy Institute. Look, if you want to do policy, this is where you come. If you want to learn what's going on in state government as of September 5th, 2017, you come to Public Affairs and you ask Ted Dabrowski, what the hell is going on here? Because seriously, you guys from the Illinois Policy Institute were the guiding light. You come up with these budget solutions. You are the think tank that represents conservative thought in the state of Illinois. You get a governor there who's sort of on your team, Bruce Rauner, and like we're, he's been governor for not, what are we going on, almost three years? Did it work? Did you get what you wanted? How's that for a question? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good question. That's Look, you know, we've been a long time in the making with a lot of bad policies. And you can, you can go back to the Edgar ramp, uh, the pension ramp. You can continue on to the pension obligation bonds of Blagojevich, followed by Quinn. You go to the massive tax hike by Quinn. Now you get to permanent tax hike uh, uh, under, under Rauner. And so we've gone from a continuous situation where policies continue to hurt Illinois. And they continue to be in favor of of the status quo, of the political elite, uh, and it continues to hurt the average Illinoisan. And so, um, and who is who is it about, Ted? Is it about Bruce Rauner? Is it about Speaker Madigan? Is it about Jeff Berkowitz? It's not about any of those people, right? No, it's about. It's, it's not about, about John Tillman. He's he is C, he is he is chairman. What wait, what is he? He is CEO of the Illinois Policy Institute. Is that correct? He, he runs the, he runs the institute. He runs the institute. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's not about John. No, it's look. It's, it's in, a in the five million dollar organization. About maybe six million. It's got about forty five to fifty people, but it's not. Who is it about, Mr. Dubrowski? Well, this is what it should be about: are the people in Rockford who are being squeezed out of their homes because of the property taxes, or the people in Waukegan, or the people in Harvey where where the pensions are about to go broke, or the people who are in in, in Cairo down down in the south. It's 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 a real problem for lots of people. To, they, they, they're struggling with their pay, they're struggling with their jobs, and they're struggling with their corrupt governments. And so that's who it needs to be about. And we need to move so our discussion away wrong, from. We need to move away from our discussion of what the political let's elite get right want to it. Let's so get what, right. the, what the people yeah. need. Yeah, that's nice because we don't want fluff. That I was getting a little bit into fluff. You were. Let's get right down to it. Bruce Rauner comes in. He ran on less spending, less ta few lower taxes, less red tape, less government, and more about giving to the people their opportunities, giving them more income, giving them more jobs, giving them more discretion over how they spend their income. It was about freedom. <clears throat> but mainly he was saying, look, lower taxes, lower spending, that was his stuff when he ran. That's why he won in a four-person primary, because he had a clear message. The others who were more experienced politicians, I have to say this, in the Republican primary, in 2014, you would probably agree, would you, they didn't have as cogent a message as Bruce Rauner, right? Well, Rauner was willing to take on the system, as he said, right? He was going to shake up Springfield. So Shake up Springfield, and it was to turn Springfield upside down? Was it the turnaround agenda? There was turn, yeah, turn, the, the, turn. He had his turnaround agenda, right? Okay. Shake up Springfield. Mm -hmm. He comes in, January, he's sworn in in January 2015. Did he do it? Did he say, I'm here? And what did he announce? What was the big plan when he came in here, go back to 2015, what did he say? Because if you don't have a plan, you don't have anything. Did he have a plan? Yeah, so he had a 44-point turnaround agenda. That's a, that's a bit it, much, Ted. Would you have said to, because you're an advisor, Tillman's an advisor, would you have said to the folks over there at the Rounder administration, 44 is a bit much. How about three or four? Look, in the end, did you say this? I'm no, just no. curious. Did anybody from the Policy Institute say, can the 44 points, let's just get three or four? I'm just wondering because if you didn't, you weren't earning your money. No, so look, he had 44 points, but there were around five key themes. So, oh, okay. So, what so were they? Let's, what were they? Yeah. let's be clear. So yeah. he had like five key themes. Okay. Uh, it's going to be around property taxes, of course, right? It's going to be around term limits. It's about better governance. Uh, it was about tax relief. Uh, government consolidation. Say? So he he had he had the, the broad. Wait a second. That was it. Those are five things. Government. No, no, no. I'm giving you broad. No, give me the four things. If you didn't do it, then we'll give you a pass. 
What should Rauner have done in January 2015? He should have gone to the people and said, here it is, here's my strategic plan, here are my four things. What should he have said? A little pop quiz, Ted, okay? Oh, well, we know. Give me, give me four. We what know, should they have right, been? Well, then let me say them, Jeff. Yes. All right, otherwise I can't. Um, so number one is property taxes. People are being squeezed out of their homes, right? Okay. So that's number what one. What about them? Say, we have to have a sense. You have to have all the What's reforms. The subject? You have to What's have the all verb? the reforms that allow property taxes to go down. Not just a property tax freeze, but you have to reform the costs that are driving property taxes okay. higher and higher. Headline, that's number one. That's number okay. one, okay? Number two, you've got to work on pension reform, right? Whatever pension yeah. reform you can do that's constitutional. And he number talked two. a lot about that. Number two. 401ks, for example. Uh, n number three, for him, very important, were term limits. Uh, I would argue, I would put that in a, in a second phase if, if, if okay. I were doing it. So do, because we're talking now, your first phase, property tax, taxes going down, the means to do it, give people in the local governments the means to get their tax, to get their spending down so they can be with the lower taxes. That was number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you said pension relief, state Correct. employee pension relief, get control of that through 401k style pensions. We're on sync, we're in sync. You've said two things, I said I got it. Give okay. me number three. Number three, look, we have the most units of local government in the nation. And to fund all that, not only do we have the highest property taxes in the nation, but we have massive subsidies going from the state <clears throat> income tax pool to local governments. So local number three. Local governments. Local so governments. So number three. What do you mean by local? Okay, number three. School districts. So school districts, townships, too many park districts, too many, just too many units of local government. But, but just let me interject. As you well, here, know, let me finish the point. Okay, yeah. go ahead. So when we have the most units of local government, that means we have massive amounts of bureaucracies and very expensive ones when we bring in the pension costs. Okay. So number three, I would be, would, would be, would be to massively consolidate. Massively, uh, massively consolidate. Massively consolidate. With an emphasis on massively. Yes, because, because we have way too many. And, and I'll give you an example. Okay. Like Florida has 67 school districts. Yeah. We have 860 di school districts. And that means we have 860 school superintendents and a massive staff in each one to support those. So that's, the kind, that's where the money's going. And if, if you don't okay. want well, to keep we'll burdening, to that. if you don't want to keep three. burdening your, your taxpayers, you've got to change that. That was three. Is there a fourth? Or yeah, no, at, at, at number four, I, I would... I would um, Include you know those those things that are red tape that are increasing the cost of of governments operating. Workers' comp would fall in that. Um, so that what is this? What's number four? What is the broad category? The, the, the workers' comp cost, ending red tape, ending in, reducing tape, the cost, reducing the cost of in business. Yes, in property taxes again for for corporations goes into that, right? So, because you can't have investment and you can't have a job growth if our companies are leaving Illinois. Okay, so I got them. Um, so those are the four. Property we, we tax add, relief and the tools to get spending down, so that's number one, spending down locally, so the property taxes can go down, mm -hmm. and they're, they don't just lower their revenue, but they've lowered their spending. Number two, state employee pension relief. In other words, reduce that burden of the state employee pension liability, and that means, it sounds like you're saying, 401k style pensions have to be introduced and massively spread through and going forward right going can't, forward can't do much about the and past number going three forward. number three is uh consolidation i will add in a meaningful way we'll come back to that and number four would be red tape streamlining business and reducing the burden of regulation by government of businesses do we get yeah. that right yeah we got that right so folks that should have been what was said in January, and was it said? No, I, by, I, th I think was it lot, said by the governor. To, to be fair to, to the governor, I think most of that was said. Now, most, the, of, yeah. most of it was said. Was said. And now, and, did, and a lot of it was pursued. No, but it, but however, for two however, and a half years, nothing happened. We didn't have a budget. So just be fair. I mean, I know you folks are aligned with the governor, but you're independent, and sometimes you work together. And when he does things that are wrong. You folks are not shy at the Illinois Policy Institute of standing up and saying it because you can't be bought. I mean, you did receive funds before he became governor, not you personally, but the Illinois Policy Institute, but not since. But you can't be bought. Yeah, so, so let me explain. What, explain to the people that. What do, you, what do I mean when I say you can't be bought? Well, we represent the people, right? We represent taxpayers. We represent residents who and So are, if Rauner doesn't do something he should do or if he does something he shouldn't do, do you guys stay quiet because once upon a time, Tillman and your organization got $500,000 from Rauner? No, absolutely not. I mean, let me give you the example. Because you can't but, be bought. But let me give you the example. Let me give you the example. Yeah. So Governor Rauner, I think, did a pretty good job of laying out things that needed to be turned around. 
And, and he campaigned on them, and not only that, he, he, he continued on that once he was in, in office. Yeah. The problem was is the path became very difficult, right? Because Mike Madigan and the Democrats on the other side opposed him every step of the was way. Is that the only problem, or you're, you're getting well, to Well, that's one of it. And so my point so to Mike you is... So Mike Madigan was a problem. So my point to you is, at some point, all his 44 turnaround agenda items effectively became zero. And I wrote about that, and I said how, how Rounders campaigned uh, agenda of 44 units became zero. Because why? We, 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 because, because of Mike Madigan? Well, I would just say that in the end, uh, most of his agenda was watered down because there was so much opposition to it. The real problem here, and I think Ted got this wrong, Ted, I can't be bought. So although you're a nice guy and you've come on the show a number of times and I appreciate it, when you say something wrong, by omission or otherwise, I call you on it, right? The elephant here in the room was that he had the wrong people. Rauner had the wrong staff. He had people who helped him get elected, like Mike Z. He had uh, Rich Goldberg. These are all, where did these people come from? Who did they used to work for? A lot for? of them work for Mark Kirk. Mark Kirk. What is wrong with working for Mark Kirk as a, as a, as a, uh, what, a prerequisite for working for Rauner. Why would you be concerned if you're Bruce Rauner coming in to shake up state government, to reform, to do what Ted Dabrowski just said had to be done, those sort of things. Why would you be concerned that your staff is led by Mark Kirk people, Kirkies? Why? Got any ideas? No, if you got a turnaround agenda, you got to have people who help you with the turnaround agenda. Believe who in believe it. in the turnaround agenda. Rich Goldberg, do you think he believed in that? I, I don't think he did. No. Mike Z, do you think he believed? I don't that? think he did. In fact, they were what? What do we call them? They were operatives. They they were not policy people. They were not wonks. They were operatives. They were hacks. Right. Well, they Jeff, were Jeff hacks. what I'll tell you is that what I'll tell you, you is that you don't answer that question, right? Well, so so Rauner, I think, had the right agenda, but then he he did not continue it. Maybe some of his staff didn't want to pursue that path. It was it was a more it was a more complex path. It was a more combatic. Agenda. They didn't know but, but, it. They didn't know it. Just to be honest here, I didn't know a lot of this stuff until I read the budget solutions that you folks put out. Because you have a coherent model embedded in that. It's not taught in Economics 101. A lot of these people didn't take Economics 101. It's not taught at the University of Chicago. It's not even taught at Harvard or MIT. It's not taught anywhere. Right? Well, Jeff, we Your wrote, stuff is so not Jeff, taught everywhere. Jeff, we didn't write. We wrote a piece that was about the people and, and where all I'm the money, no, hang on, hang on, no, 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 this is important on. because this is where, the, get Jeff, get this is where the money was going. No, if you can't, see, Jeff, if you care about taxpayers, if you care about the Illinois, right. not you. We're 12 one, minutes into the show just so we uh, got eight, 17 minutes left, listen, so use your time Listen, carefully. this is what's important, is that you've got to look at where all the money's going because it's going out of people's pockets, right, and it's going into to the government coffers. I mean, my point and, is, and, my, look, let me interrupt you, we, we're from time. Number one, you said property taxes. You wanted to get property taxes not frozen, which is what Rauner talks about. You want to get them down because they're the highest in the country. Freezing something at the high level is not a good idea. If your temperature is 106 and your doctor said, let's freeze your temperature, it won't go any higher, you're going to die, right? You're going to die. You would say to your doctor, don't tell me how to freeze my temperature at 106. Tell me how to get it down, how to cool it no, off. I think it's even worse than that, uh, Jeff. You don't because, like that metaphor. No, 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 no. That was a good metaphor. But yeah. the point was, so if we're, if we're talking about what happened with the tax hike, is we ended up with a freeze at high levels, right? And in exchange for that, we had to pay even more income taxes. Right. So it was, it was not a good trade. Okay, so, but the point is, number two, and you said this, to get local governments to live with those lower taxes, if you're able to get them down, which is a whole other matter, property taxes, to get local governments to do that, you have to give them the means to lower their spending. A major way, and I never really thought about this, even though I'd, I was on the Winneka School Board, plead guilty, okay? I'm not, I wasn't responsible for anything they did because I was always in the minority, but never want, <clears throat> school boards around the state negotiate outrageously high contracts with the teachers unions. The teachers unions like them, the school boards like them, the school boards are not representing the people. They become captured by the superintendent who's captured by the teachers union. That whole little scenario you folks write about and you say you have to curtail the scope of collective bargaining. 
We have to figure out a way so these teachers unions are not pushing the wages up for teachers. And similarly in other areas, but, but teaching, teaching property taxes, especially in the suburbs, accounts for about 75%, excuse me, education accounts for about 75% of your local dollars. If you don't get control of that, you don't control anything. Yeah, now it's the same thing. It's across all units of government. So it's not just in, in the school no, contracts. No, but it's 70, you're where no, the, the money the, the, the biggest one, sure, but I'm, what I'm saying is it's across everywhere. We rob banks because that's where the money is. Who was that? Bonnie and Clyde. They, why do we rob banks? Because that's where the money is. If you were going to do this thing about being a pansy, okay, like Dan Prof called, who did he call a pansy? Jim Durkin. That's a whole other matter. But don't be a pansy. 75%, you're going to have to take on the teachers' unions. There's no ifs, ands, and buts. You can't start saying, oh, but the teachers are just a part. No, that's the major part, 70%. Now, Jeff, let me explain something because you're missing the point. Cities in Illinois are facing bankruptcy. Harvey is talking about it right now. There's a whole bunch of others who will. And some of that is because of the, the city contracts. So school districts are one piece. Har and Harvey, if you tell me... Their total spending by that government, and I mean, and I'm, I'm saying something I'm, else. Jeff. I'm consolidating. No, I'm consolidating education. If it's separate. I'm not saying you're wrong about what's. No, but I just want. But the point is, in Harvey, if they're going under, is it because the village council is spending too much, or is it because they're spending too much on education? Because it may not be Harvey, but no, we hear no, all the but time. It's the city. My, my we point hear is all the, the city, time Jeff. about these outrageous these schools. These cities, municipalities going under, and somebody's making, as a superintendent in the school district, $300,000 a year. The point is that they're all problems. Okay, they're all so problems. They're all well, problems. We so you were talking about, hang on. No, but, but Jeff, okay. I'm trying to make a point. The point is you have school, 16 minutes. Yeah, you have school district problems. You have We're school, only down to 13. You have school district problems, and you also have your ability to deli deliver police okay. and fire and core government services like, like fixing roads. It's all a problem. And so It's not the major part. Look, go out. You, you live in Wilmette. Why don't you get familiar with the park district in Wilmette, get familiar with the library district in Wilmette, and get familiar with police and fire in Wilmette, and get familiar with education in schools in Wilmette? Guess what? Schools dominate all those other hey, things. Hey, Jeff, I'm not disagreeing with you. But just I'm, say I'm, you're I'm right agree and let's no, move on. I'm agreeing with you. Up time. No, I'm agreeing with you. Time. I'm agreeing with you. What I'm saying is don't diminish the problems that our police and fire and, and, and other pension okay. funds have. And they're because very- Because of the pensions. You just mentioned, you've mentioned the key word. Jeff, Jeff, the if pensions. cities can't deliver okay. police and okay. fire, they're gonna be in trouble too. And okay. residents care about that too. But that was item two, where you get there. Okay, so he's, basically Ted said, you were right all along and I apologize for taking 10 minutes. I appreciate it. No, I don't, I don't I apologize. Your apology. okay. I don't apologize. I'm just kidding. I'm giving Ted a good time. I'm not giving Ted a tough time, but you made an important point because you brought us to point two, pensions, okay? Yeah. Pensions are like this huge problem. It's $250 billion, they say. Is that in unfunded liability or liabilities? Unfunded liabilities. Unfunded. That means we have a $250 billion liability of the state government of Illinois that is unfunded. So if we're going to pay that off, we're going to have to raise taxes to pay for that, right? If it's unfunded, how do we get funds into that thing to pay for it? Right. If you don't, if you don't stop performing, and if you, you don't and stop I know there's no way we're going to find 250 billion dollars. So really, the only way is to declare and bankruptcy. Not if we keep, not if we keep if losing we can, our tax base as well. Can the state of Illinois <laughs> declare bankruptcy? Is that permitted? Not today. But you could change the law in Congress, and then the state of Illinois can, right? Mm -hmm. That has to be done because there ain't any way in God's green earth that the state of Illinois is going to get 250 billion dollars to pay off these pensions, right? It'd take a long time. So we so, have so, to. Number one, out of this show, do you, do you agree? You guys should be out there advocating that states be allowed to declare bankruptcy, shouldn't you? Yeah, so, so you've got a precedent set is that with a yes? Puerto Rico. Is that a yes? Well, we have to, we have to make sure we understand. Can I get a yes or a no? Uh, Jeff, it's not that simple, right? Because what, what you want is a proper bankruptcy law. <clears throat> and let me explain. Okay. Right, so you can end up with a bankruptcy law that ends up hitting people and hit, ends up hitting the state and yet protects things like Un, un, unsustainable and unmanageable pensions. No, you have to no, not exclude but Jeff, that from the pensions. But Jeff, this is you my have point. To allow you let, let me finish. Let okay. me finish, Jeff. My point is, is that if you get bad bankruptcy law, then okay. it will actually hurt more. Okay. So you've got to. Not, so, so it's not as simple as just getting any bankruptcy law. You've got to get the correct bankruptcy. But you law. have to have the states given the power to declare bankruptcy. And my good friend, my good. Well, we can't have Fred's in journalism, but my good <coughs> subject here, uh, Ted Dabrowski has pointed out. You have to get that law written clearly so it doesn't protect 
those pensions to say that pensions are excluded from this law and you have bankruptcy, but then you still have and that. And Jeff, if you follow what's happened in a lot that. of places around the country, you end up with the situation where there's a lot of pain, Yet you, it, but you it retain, but it, you haven't fixed okay. the problem. It retains it. So, so you got a place you like Stockton. You got a place it. like Stockton, which runs the risk of okay. re-entering bankruptcy. So you after can do it by a... getting the right law passed, and you guys should be advocating for that. That's right. Are you doing it? Yeah, we we spent some time on that. When's the last time somebody wrote and said what you and I have said in the last three minutes? Uh, there's there's work there's work that's going on behind. Can you it, point it's to a any lot of work. article? Uh, we've we've got lots of articles. Get going. We don't have time. Hey, I'm the only one who's indignant here. There is no time. We're out of time, okay? That was item one. That was item two. We covered pensions. And the 401 let, let, case. Let's, let's cover second, pensions real quick. 401 case stuff. You've got to talk about yeah, that. The yeah. one simple reform that's constitutional that doesn't require anything special is to move all new workers to 401k starting tomorrow, right? And that's one that should be done. It will... It will begin and end to the pension crisis because you'll stop accruing more of these liabilities. It doesn't solve the problem. You still have the old debt that has to be paid okay. down, but you stop accruing new liabilities. We haven't done that. Rauner did not do that. He did not push for that. The legislature did not uh, require that. New state employees who came well, you, in, you've got this, it would have been got this hybrid plan. We could have had more from the state legislature to make sure that all of the new employees that came in had the option, or maybe were mandatory, had 401k style pensions. We've had new employees since January 2015, right? Absolutely. And what percentage of those new employees have 401k style pensions? Well, none. And what, zero percent. Yeah, we, we haven't had 401ks. Why can't we? Because we haven't passed it. The only reason is because we haven't passed it. So somebody here at the Policy Institute is responsible for that. You have an arm that helps people get, Matt Besler, gets people elected as state rep and state senator and so forth, and you should be pushing for them, you should be giving them the research, you should be out saying what I'm saying and what you're saying in this program, and it should be done, it hasn't been happening. Look, I have to be fair, you guys aren't doing the job. You're not getting it done. We're, we're the ones that have, have made 401ks a, you know, when we started. I know, this, you made hey, household hey, Jeff, I was saying something. Okay. Yes. So we started, we started this, this discussion a few years back. And 401ks, nobody would even talk about them. They were, they were pushed to the side. Where are now, you? Excuse me. <laughs> now, they're, now they're in the discussion all the time. Okay. 401ks are part of the discussion. As a matter of fact, there's a, 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 a okay. small bill passed uh, to end double dipping, and they include 401ks in the bill. All I'm saying is you've got you to gotta elect these people, right? You've got to elect the state reps, and you've got to elect the state senators. So point four was red tape, and that's nice, but... That's kind of vague, so we're going to put that aside for now. There's more that can be done to reduce the role of regulation in state government. You mentioned workers' comp. That's not a regulation. You need a causation standard. You need a way to make workers' comp radically better. <clears throat> As the governor has said, you have ways, if you change the way in which we do workers' comp, you have agent, independent entities that will rate it and say, if you do this, Illinois will go from being seventh from the bottom, seventh worst, to in the middle. Rauner said that, and yet he comes up with workers' comp compromises, and he says, they're working, I congratulate you. No, the governor should have said, this is a piece of crap. This stuff that you're doing, you shouldn't mince words, it's a piece of crap. You need to get something and present it to me and say, it takes us from being seventh from the bottom to being in the middle. And you haven't done it, and until you do that, I'm going to tell everybody. I'm going to take out ads. I'm going to spend money saying what they have done. I don't care whether they're a Republican or a Democrat. It's a piece of crap. Right? Well, I think... The, the, in, Did I say something you disagree with? No, no. I think there's many reforms where we've ended up very diluted from where we started from. Okay. And so it, the main thing is we have to... We're, on, we're short on time. We've got, okay, maybe about like four minutes left. So let's wrap it up here. You got your folks in there. After two and a half years of wasted time by the governor, he held out. He says, I want major reforms. I want major reforms if I'm going to agree to a budget, i.e. if I'm going to agree to a tax increase. Because the Democrats could have done the tax increase all along. They had the numbers to do it, but they didn't want to wear the jacket. They wanted Rauner to have Republicans wear the jacket with them. And he wouldn't do it until he got major reforms. And he'd say, saying, give me something. And they say, what? The media. Like, I'm in the media. What do you want? I, I don't care. Just give me something. Well, Governor, could you name two or three things you could prioritize? No, he wouldn't. He didn't have people there who would help him prioritize. He needed them. He had Kirkies, okay, who just said, don't fight, okay? 
So then, earlier this, what, about a month ago, the Illinois Policy Institute, <clears throat> you send your people over there. You said, okay, we're going to, we're almost beat. We're going to fight tough now. We got Christina Rasmussen. Who would you send there? She's, the C she's now the what's chief, of staff. chief of staff. Who else did you send? Now, we didn't send her there. The governor okay. asked them to come, but just to be clear. Yeah, but you were happy to send these people there. You were happy the governor asked, and you were happy to release them to go there. So right? Michael Lucci went there as policy, policy director. Guy, right? Right? And, mm -hmm. and what else? And you had uh, communication staff go Who was as there? well. Diana Rickert and? and one of her colleagues. And, and Laura Patrick from the Walker administration, who you folks right. knew. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you had four people go there in communications. And four people. Well, were, we had two. What? Who were direct, who were direct Part reports. of the new team, the new regime. There was a regime change. And then what happened? You guys got involved with this cartoon. Somebody characterized as racist, which was stupid. Because tell them about the cartoon. What did it say? No, it was a cartoon that um, was defending the, the kids of CPS against a slush fund, which are TIFs, which were taking money from the school districts so that Rahm Emanuel could hand them out as. Uh, Okay. Is, you know, to so when, this became, when somebody said it was racist because there was a black kid who was reaching for money and this big white guy, a fat cat, was taking, putting it in his pocket, that wasn't racist. That was representing helping low-income blacks get the resources they need for education. Why didn't the professionals who you sent over there, Diana Rickard, just say what I said? Well, Jeff, I can't, I can't say what they did. They, they well, it's important because Diana Rickard's now gone, right? And we don't even know who the hell is running communications now. Look, look, and so you have to it is important. It is not just a staff change. It is important. You had a major change in staff from your organization to there to get it right, and now they are gone. What happened? So what I can tell you is that the political elite decided to really make a mess of this, of this policy issue, which is the policy issue itself. TIFs are racist. They take away money from low-income kids. 85% of CPS kids are black or brown. That money's being siphoned off by Rahm Emanuel and given out to developers. That's the racist policy. You but see, what happened was there was a big windstorm around this cartoon. You're professionals. And Diana Rickard is better than anybody. She should be able to say what you said, clarify them, and kick ass. That's what she should do. She should kick ass. That legislature that passed this thing saying this was terrible, this cartoon, the whole freaking legislature, all these Republicans, she should kick ass. She didn't because she's gone and they won. And now what? Now you got a you got the chief of staff there and you got a policy advisor. You got this big tax increase. You got a terrible... The, this funding formula has been adopted, and Rauner's capitulated on that. He's capitulated on uh, he's capitulated on the sanctuary state. You think that's good too? Well, I think I think I won't comment on the sanctuary state because that's a, that's a policy we don't cover, and there's a, there's a lot to the be discussed there. The point is, the point we only got a minute left. Tell Governor Rauner what he does now because is it all over? Does he just ride out the next year? Do you give do you give a rat's ass whether Governor Rauner wins re-election? Look, once again, I'll tell you, what we care about is turning around this state. No, but and if Governor is, Rauner, he, is he an instrument to do that? Well, Governor Could Rauner, Democrats do that just as well? Could J.B. Pritzker do that just as well, Chris Kennedy? Or does Rauner still give you a better shot in getting reelected over the next four years? Just answer well, that what, question. Well, what I'll please. tell you is what you know is that Pritzker and others are calling for a progressive tax hike. They, okay. want, more, they want more taxes. Is Rauner calling Hang for on, that? They want more taxes, and they, they don't talk about the okay. reforms that are necessary. Okay. Rauner... We'll have to see what his agenda is. He hasn't announced one. Has he announced that he's running? I don't think he has yet. Number no, two is no, is number two is we haven't seen his agenda. So this is your so, this is your focus now. Get Rauner to oppose the progressive income tax. What else do you want Rauner to do? Well, we want we want again to focus back on the reforms. What we just talked about the pension reform, We're the property go back, tax reform. Try to do the things you guys didn't do with your people coming in. They had to leave. Try to get Diana Rickard back in there. Well, what we need to do is is, is Mike Lucci going to do it right? I is Christina Rasmussen You'll, you'll have to, you'll have to ask Rasmussen? them at the governor's office, right? They're the ones you need to ask directly. But you could just pick up the phone and talk to Christina. I can't. Jeff, what we need to do, what we need have? to do, what we need to do is get back to focusing on the people and making sure that they elect the right people to get the reforms. Okay, we got to go. We got to cut it that short because we're out of time. Just remember, you come back next week and every week to Public Affairs. Thank you so much, Ted Dabrowski, VP, Illinois Policy Institute.